a YouTuber, which broadly means I upload videos to YouTube and benefit from their advertising program to earn a lot of my income. I've had this job for about five, six, seven years now. It's been weird. I make videos. It's like a show where I do sketches and I talk to the camera sometimes. So yeah, it's definitely weird. But my videos run against ads and the money trickles down. It, you know, it's passive, but it's active. It's slow, but it's compounding. It works for me for now. Outside of this channel, of course, I've done other projects. I've been on some big budget shoots. I've been in a couple of commercials over the years. All in all, I'm what the industry calls an influencer. Not that I influence people and people follow everything I say, but that I have a large following and I've been able to work with brands because of it. It's what people like me are called. So that's my job, I guess. Except, wait, no, I used to be a Viner and the Vine app doesn't exist anymore. So it's not like I have a job. It's more like I have a conditional gig that relies on the survival of platforms like YouTube, like Vine, like TikTok. YouTube might not always exist. You know, it might, but it might not. Also, I'm not just on YouTube. I have accounts on other platforms too. Also, the internet itself could shut down or re-regulate so do I have a real job? Like, how do I tell? When I talk to my dad, he sometimes talks about his real job. Like he works during the week, he gets up, he puts on a white collar and commutes to the office. You know, he gets benefits and insurance and paid vacation days, all that good stuff. A real job. Obviously YouTubers and TikTokers and wish washers, you know, they can make a lot of money too. When there's influencers on the Forbes list and internet creators with mansions and Twitch gamers with sports cars. You could argue that as soon as you make enough money as an influencer or content creator to support yourself and your family and pay all your bills, of course you have a real job. You know, you're surviving on the back of that channel that you've built up in the community that you've created. But all of that still doesn't negate the fact that as an influencer, you're vulnerable to the platform that you're on. You know, it could shut down or it could shut your account down. It could blacklist your content. The more things that your job is vulnerable to, the shorter amount of time that you're likely to have it and the less it feels like a real job, a permanent job. So how do you make it permanent? That's going to depend on the situation. A moment ago, I mentioned the Forbes list. A lot of those influencers got there not from just getting clicks and views, but by creating their own products and companies and intellectual properties. You can diversify. You can save up money and put it into an apparel business, into a label, into real estate. You know, you can put it into crypto. A lot of influencers also work regular hourly jobs for multiple streams of income. So nobody's doing any one thing in particular and there's all kinds of ways to navigate. Okay, yeah, we know all that, but the overall point is hasn't the influencer concept just kind of peaked? What do you mean? Like with superheroes. Superheroes? Yeah, like how people started making superhero movies and then we couldn't stop making superhero movies and then there were comedy superhero movies and dark superhero movies and space superhero movies and superhero sitcoms. Yeah, yeah, the overload, I get it, I get it. And now it's influencer this and influencer that and every kid wants to grow up and be a YouTuber and be famous. It's like back in the 80s when everybody wanted to be a DJ probably. Is that what people were doing in the 80s? I don't know, how old are you? How old are you? And what are you doing here? I'm here to talk about a sponsor. Oh. If you want to break into any industry and become an influencer, or basically if you want to embark on anything challenging, it's going to take a lot of planning, a lot of top-down thinking, a lot of strategy. Chris Bowman talks a lot about this in his strategy class on Skillshare. Skillshare is a resource for anybody, no matter how old you are, no matter what you do in life, it is a learning environment that helps creatives and professionals improve their skills, learn new things, and consult with experts across a wide variety of topics and industries. Whether you're an artist or an influencer, whether you own a business or want to start one, Skillshare has hours and hours of classes on hundreds of topics that are sure to pique your interest. Chris talks about business management strategies from a startup point of view. But there's also classes about building a personal brand or about making content that's engaging to viewers and favored by Google's ranking algorithm. Whatever you're looking for, you're sure to find it on Skillshare and you can get a free trial of Skillshare Premium by clicking the link in the description below. Check the description, link's in there. The first 1,000 people to click the link can get a free trial of Skillshare. After that, it's around $10 a month. Thank you to Skillshare for supporting this video. Okay, so I just did the influencer thing, the ad break thing during a video talking about influencers. It feels kind of weird, right? All right, hold on to that feeling because that's what I'm gonna talk about next. A lot of influencers have reservations about being called that, that business term, influencer. Now I'll grant that it is an accurate description. I did do an ad break just now, but sometimes it feels like there's some negative connotation to the word influencer. In some corners being called an influencer implies that your only purpose is to sell yourself out to advertisers and be loud and influence your audience 
audience and to watch the ads. But the fact is, a lot of people who find themselves becoming influencers did so by exploring a hobby or building up an organic community around something they like to do. And it's only after the fact that they were able to monetize it. The monetization of it may not always be the most consistent compared to a real job, but the creative freedom and the intrinsic reward of building something yourself and creating your own future is very real and, and hard to put a price on. Okay, but you still didn't address my main point. And what was that again? I said that the influencer concept is come and gone. It's peak. It's overdone. Like every time a tweet goes viral, somebody's got to promote their podcast under it or like, you know, promote a face peel mask or whatever. Influencer culture has just infected everything. There's AI influencers that are run entirely by robots now. There's people who buy followers and likes in order to look more famous and get more work. Like nobody should want to be an influencer. It's not a real job. It's not a real career path. It's a side hustle at best. Like unless you're running an actual business, and use it for marketing. It doesn't make sense. Influencers aren't even that talented, like besides what, the ability to be young and good looking and put logos on t-shirts to sell to preschoolers? Like, what's the point? Just a bunch of people pointing cameras at themselves and doing a conga line around a bonfire of narcissism and self-importance. Are you done? Being an influencer is, is fundamentally just an internet subsidized ego trip, come on. Okay, let me put it this way. If you're focusing on the term influencer, if you're focusing on influencing, if you're focused on who's popular, you're focused on the wrong thing. Your influence is the residual effect of all the ways you impact a community, good and bad. The term influencer is just a label that's given by the world, and if the world stops seeing you that way, then you're just you. So it's best to reject that outside framing altogether. Of course there's egos, of course there's clout chasing and power grabbing and influencers that are problematic, but you've got to think more long term than who's hot this year. Also, social media is just the internet. You can be a king online, but a pawn in real life. The best influencers are introspective, looking into themselves instead of looking outwardly and chasing the latest bag and the latest trend. Not that I'm against chasing bags and trends, get your money for sure, but influencing isn't the thing. You know, your thing is the thing. I think many people end up realizing that when you try to be a big influencer just for the sake of being a big influencer, you can end up looking like a cat chasing a laser pointer around the room and it can feel kind of pointless after a while. Being an influencer is a real job, but influencing isn't the job. And if an influencer is all you are or aspire to be, you might not be one for long. It's like being a professional athlete. You're paid to play a game, but you don't play just for the money. You also play because you love the game and the discipline of it. And you're able to make a living doing it because you're skilled enough for your talents to be marketable on a you know global scale. Of course, you can always lose your salary You know, if you're unable to perform. But since performing and honing your craft is something that you might do anyway, even without pay, after a while it becomes relatively straightforward to maintain your career. Same thing with artists and influencers. You just have to focus on the game that you're specifically playing. If you're a dancer, focus on dancing. If you paint, focus on that. Don't change yourself to fit a mold or an algorithm. Only change yourself to further your own development. Do you hear yourself right now? What's wrong? You're acting like everybody's an artist and does everything for the love of creativity. No. Money. Clout. That's the whole game. People will do anything, say anything, post anything. It's always been like that. Flash in the pan. Trust me. Flash in the pan. People will do anything for attention and clout. Yes. But a lot of that stuff is just a flash in the pan. It's quick. It's over with and people move on. Stop thinking short term. In the long run, real influencers, real artists, and real life work more like a slow cook. They meticulously assemble the right ingredients and take time to build the right foundation and through their evolution people eventually come to realize that they were the genuine article the whole time and you think you're one of those influencers i didn't think all that listen of course there's grifters on the internet you know people who figured out a hack to get millions of views by exploiting this or that life is weird and upside down and unfair in a lot of ways but you can waste a lot of time thinking about what other people are doing and whether they're legitimate um and that's time that's better spent on your life and what you're doing that's what I think. Um, if you're an influencer or an online person, how do you feel about your job? I'd love to know. Write me a comment. Thanks for the view. Be sure to like or dislike. Have a great day.